really want to talk about um, being at a number one dental school. Um, so you can, <laughs> you can give us all an insight into what it feels like to, to be at King's. Um, so yeah, tell us, tell us what it's like uh, being at King's Dental School. So um, you've done two years um, at King's. Um, yeah. what, what's it like in first year starting at King's? So because I'm a graduate, I started actually in the second year. So I've only at the moment had one year at King's, not even one year because, uh, because of the pandemic, it's actually been cut short to six months. But in those first six months, it's been absolutely amazing because you are able to go to places like Guy's Hospital and you're able to be taught by some of the best clinical teachers and so what's guys hospital <laughs> so guys hospital is um a hospital in in london southwark and you are able to uh, study there on the phantom heads and you're able to see patients because it has a attached specialist dental unit there so you're able to actually go and 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 treat patients that would normally come to guys to get any dental treatment um, and you're able to see, you're able to, to shadow um, some of the lecturers and some of the older students as well and see what kind of things they do to treat patients. Yeah, what, what was the first week like? What were you doing, you know, orientation? Uh, so because I was in the graduate entry course, they, they do something where you, ha you start three weeks prior to any other students joining in the second year. And in those three weeks, they basically teach you almost everything that they've taught the younger years in the first year. So you basically go through things like um, tooth morphology. So we had a tooth morphology exam in the first week um, where you just practice like waxing, waxing up teeth and trying to make the actual tooth as, as closely as you can to the actual natural morphology of the tooth. And then you also have things like um, anatomy as well. So you go into for dissections and you learn, you recap the basic anatomy, but if for example, your previous degree didn't do it, that's a great chance to learn about things like, you know, the body system. So we learned about the mediastinum, the lungs, the heart, and that's all finished off with a nice little anatomy spotter exam, just to test your knowledge. And um, yeah, you learn about things like dentinogenesis, amelogenesis, all of those things which a traditional BSc course wouldn't teach you in the first year, but a, a traditional BDS course would teach you. Okay. What was that like? Did you feel um, overwhelmed? What, what was the experience like? It was very jam-packed full. So we were in for three weeks before anyone else started from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and we were just getting lectures and they were just trying to basically give us a nice introduction into the course. And it was a chance to connect with other graduates who had gotten in as well. So you weren't starting the course with all the other years, with all the other years and all of the other students in your year group on your own. You were able to form connections with other graduates as well, which was really nice. You're able to meet some of the lecturers as well and know where you're going before the actual course starts. So it was a nice little introduction. It was a bit like a freshers week, but yeah. without the freshest things. <laughs> <laughs> so were you commuting um, or were you living close by? So I actually booked an accommodation um, for the year but because our course started quite early, the contract hadn't begun then. So I was actually commuting in for the first three weeks. It was very tiring. It was uh, very hectic because rush hour in London is just crazy. <laughs> and I just thought to myself after those three weeks, never again, I'm definitely going to try my best to live out in London if I can. Yeah, um, would you say, um, okay, how about the rest of, the, the following weeks you get to meet the rest of your year group and you getting into some sort of routine how, how was that so because in the year group there's so many students um it's very very hard to get to know everyone on a personal level very quickly yeah. so it's uh so when all the students start coming in you were slowly able to get to know people because what kings do is they break you up into smaller groups and 
um, so you interact with people in your group a lot more than you do with the whole year group because you get tutorials, you get seminars and you go into clinics with each other. But then every year those groups will change. So you will be able to meet a lot of people throughout your time at King's. Roughly how many are there in one year group? And then what size are, what sizes are the smaller groups? So there are about 160, I think over 160 people in the year group. Okay. And the smaller groups, there's about 10 to 11 smaller groups and they're made up of around, oh, they are made up of, they're, they're variable, but they do make them up into about groups of 15, 16 people. Okay. Okay, so that's actually very similar to what we were split into in New Clan in our first year. Um, oh, really? They split, because there, th there were 32 of us, then they split us into two groups of 16. So yeah, those are the six groups that we'll do our tutorials in and... Yeah, so yeah. And quite, quite similar in that respect. Did you plan change the groups? Um, no, they got even smaller. <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah because after first year or at the end of your first year you then split into groups of eight so you start off as 32 you split into two 16s and then you split up into eights so then the group of eight that i was in we were then sent off to blackpool and that's oh, where we did the rest okay. of our training another would go to carlisle further up north some would go to morecambe and some would go to accrington right yeah. so yeah with, with kings what they do is they do split you up into groups but then every year those groups will change so you do get the opportunity to meet loads of people from the year group and develop some really nice relationships do you end up having the same phantom head um yeah so you basically go onto a floor which is dedicated for phantom head learning and uh, you get the same phantom head, unless your phantom head is faulty, then they may change you around. But most of the time you do get the same phantom head and you get used to your little bay and it's very nice. You've got do you know how many other people would have that same phantom head? Um, so all of the, the groups really that come in would have the same phantom head, but we wouldn't come in on the same day. So in second year, we had one day of clinics every, every week. So our day would be Friday. So we would go in and we would sit on the same phantom head and we'd do different things like resin composite, uh, amalgam, introduction to root canal treatment. And the beauty of Kings is that they actually use real tea in their phantom head. So you get a really good idea of what it's like to work with a real tooth mm. instead, of, instead of fake teeth. Okay. okay, that's very cool, very cool. What would you say are some of the highlights? So you said working with real teeth. What are the other highlights um, studying at King's? Um, the amount of resources that are available. There's, um, there's a, a Gordon Museum at King's, which basically have some amazing models, which you can use to study tooth morphology or, or even read up on, more on biology and, and the human body. And then on top of that, you've got real life dissections that are happening. Uh, that you're able to to go into and, and learn from and those are really helpful because once you see it you can't forget it yeah. so those are really really helpful to learn anatomy and um, yeah I love the fact that kings also do tutorials they do very regular tutorials so you have to prepare before you go in for a tutorial but when you're actually in a tutorial you are able to review the knowledge which you have learnt and you're able to pick up on anything which you didn't really understand. You're able to ask questions. There's a lot of interaction with the lecturers and with other students and there's a lot of group work and presentations. So it's a very active course. You, you, have, to, you have to be fully involved in it. And I think that that's the best way of learning because you're constantly engaged. Yeah. Do you spend Monday to Friday um, on the course? Are there any days off or half days? So you do have lectures normally on a Wednesday and then there'll be days dedicated to certain things. So depending on what group you're in, you'll have, for example, in my group, we had uh, clinical skills on a Friday. We had perio on a Tuesday 
we had a uh, conservative and MI dentistry on a Thursday. So th there's, there's dedicated days for certain subjects. And sometimes that may move around in between. You may have lectures dotted or workshops, yeah. um, but all in all, it's, it's the same kind of timetable. Yeah. So uh, have you had much experience on the um, clinics with patients? So we were actually meant to see our first perio patients um, in, in the end of March, but that never ended up happening. So unfortunately, because of the pandemic, so we missed out on that front. But hopefully next year we'll be able to start seeing patients. But typically in BDS1, I believe that you are given the opportunity to um, shadow if you want to, because they do they do things like sign up sheets where you can go in and you can you can shadow some of the older years just to familiarize yourself with the clinics and how to set up a clinical bay and some of the dental materials that are used. And then in year two, you actually do get to interact with patients um, in, at the end of March, but that didn't happen, unfortunately. If somebody was thinking about potentially choosing Kings um, at, for, for dentistry, uh, is there anything that you would say would be a reason for somebody not to go to Kings? Um, so, for example, maybe if it's a very busy um, dental school and people want something that's not as busy, are, are there any things where it's like Marmite, you're going to love this, you're going to hate it? Do you, do you notice anything like that with Kings? Um, I think all in all, King's is just a wonderful place to study because you have so much support and you're able to access so many resources to actually learn things. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that there's anything which... Hmm. No, I think if anything, some people may feel that the cohort is too big. Okay. Um, and if, for example, for me, it was quite a shock because I came from UConn, which was a very, very small cohort. I think we had about 23 people in our course. Yeah. So coming into such a big course was a shock at first, but I actually really enjoyed it because I was able to meet so many different people and, and there's so many different personalities and characters on the course and you're able to learn so much from each other. Yeah. And that really enhances the learning experience. So that's something that you can adjust to then. Yeah. If you use a smaller place or group you, you're able to adjust to the bigger size yeah group. especially because they they break you up for into smaller groups when it comes to clinic days when it comes to tutorials so you are co you're comfortable you do get enough uh, interaction with the lecturers as well which is very nice yeah. are there um do you get free time to be able to do extracurricular activities um yeah do, do you get time for a life <laughs> yes you definitely do they're very adamant on us keeping up with our hobbies and I think it's really important because the course is it's very demanding in its own in its own way because there's a lot of independent learning you have to do there's a lot of preparation for tutorials um, and even for clinical skills you need to know what you're going in to do yeah. prior to the day so you do need to uh, focus a lot on keeping up to date with the course and keeping engaged with it but there are nice, there are thankfully a lot of days which, you know, you, you can actually go ahead and do what you like to do. So, for example, on Tuesdays, we get, we get perio tutorials, but we actually finish around lunchtime. So then after that, you can go ahead and go partake in any societies or any sports you may like. So there's definitely time for a life yeah. uh, if you want. <laughs> That's good. That's good. No, thank you for that. I'm sure um, people that are looking to study at King's will find this really useful. Um, and I'm sure we'll do some sort of part two in the future. So no, thank you. Oh, no worries at all. Thank you very much for having me.